And good afternoon and welcome to this virtual bridge on of the 26th of March 2021. Today we have Delivering Digital Learning Across a Large Region. So we've got Billy Curry and Callum Rogers from Dumfries and Galloway College and John Wilson of Agenda. Dumfries and Galloway College faced a real challenge, how to deliver secure and seamless digital learning across a huge geographical area. They needed to create a learning network that would effortlessly connect both colleges and communities. Digital classrooms were the answer, using a real-time video platform designed for the education sector, creating a college without walls. So, without further ado, I will hand over to Billy and Callum of Dumfries and Galloway College and John Wilson of Agenda. Gentlemen. Thank you, Owen. Um, I think what might be prudent is if I perhaps give a, just a quick overview, um, just a little bit of flavour into who we are. Uh, and how we've supported Dumfries and Galloway on this project and the ongoing project as time goes on. Um, just in a nutshell, um, just a couple of minutes, let me give you a kind of just a brief overview of who we are. Uh, so a few years ago, we um, uh, had a partnership with Jessica, and we still have a partnership with Jessica, where we took over ownership of what was previously called Janet Video Conferencing Services. Um, over the course of a couple of years, we rebuilt, re-imaged, redesigned, and rebranded this platform um, to support more of a kind of community aspect to teaching and learning with a, a more of a focus on not the web conferencing side of it or the online side of it. Our focus is on connecting classrooms and learning spaces across physical campuses, which has obviously been quite difficult over the last 12 months. Um, but when, when people go back, uh, using these connected classrooms and learning spaces to support many different aspects of what is required within education across the whole spectrum from early years to high school to further education and higher education to support things like curriculum equity, um, subject enhancement, subject choice, and also to deliver more of a kind of community um, uh, delivery method for things like vocational based learning. So linking colleges up with industry and high schools up with industry to facilitate a community aspect and a collaborative aspect to education delivery and sharing. Over the course of the last couple of years, we've worked with um, hundreds of institutions across the UK and Ireland to create programs to support things like teaching parity, you know, the ability to teach from one classroom out to three or four at the same time, um, the ability to deliver rich content into classrooms. Uh, and all of this has been done through the vSCENE platform um, and the vSCENE hardware that we deliver into, into learning spaces. You know, there is many different terms about just now, you know, you've got blended learning, hybrid learning, connected learning, and many different modalities and models that support uh, different methods of delivery, um, supporting existing pedagogies and working to create new pedagogies. We've uh, helped facilitate and deliver into about three or 400 uh, learning spaces across the UK. And we've seen some significant success from that. And, you know, Dumpreet Callum and uh, Billy will talk a little bit about some of the successes that they've seen uh, across Dumfries and Galloway College and the work that they've been doing to work with other, uh, with Borders College and uh, the Dumfries and Galloway Council schools across the region. Um, and it's been great and quite humbling to be involved in such impactful projects across um, schools, particularly within rural and disadvantaged areas where we can see, you know, immediate and significant impact. Um, we, um, next slide. <clears throat> There we go. So this gives you a kind of uh, example of, of what can be done. It's not just about the remote learning um, or the remote delivery. It's about the shared learning pedagogy, connecting classrooms up with other classrooms, up with other classrooms. You know, there's, there's, there's a huge, and I hate to use the term that everybody's sick of, there is a brave new world now, not just on the back of COVID, which has definitely increased appetite for digital technologies, but education has been constantly being disrupted uh, just now in a good way. And we can see specific things within technology that can help democratize access to education, um, not just across the UK, but globally. Um, and it's a big shift that's happened over the last 12 months. People have been pushed to use technologies that have seen, you know, 
difficult aspects of it, but mostly positive aspects of it. And this is this is what we're we're working on just now across uh, further education and schools, industry, and higher education as well. Anyway, <clears throat> that's my piece, <clears throat> just to give you a little flavour on the kind of projects that we've been working on just now. And as I say, the key uh, project uh, from Dumfries and Galloway was one that was started uh, a good couple of years ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, and they are innovative as a college anyway. Um, and they've just taken the bull by the horns and, and just pushed digital technologies uh, in such an exciting and innovative, innovative way across, across that region. Uh, Callum, Billy, please. Thank you very much for the for the big introduction, John. Um, yeah, Dumfries and Galloway College, we're going back now to as far as 2017 when the idea of a, a, a digital skills and learning network started to kind of come to light. Um, we were asked to look at a project that was going to be um, impactful, not just for our college, but for the, for the region as a whole. And we worked with uh, Borders College on this part as well. Um, south of Scotland is such a rural area, such a vast area. Um, our, we needed something that was going to stretch from Stranra right across to Eyemouth, basically. So we had to kind of start thinking a wee bit outside the box. You know, what what is it we're looking to do? What is it we're trying to achieve? One of the biggest things we're trying to achieve is really, as, as John says, it's this connecting up institutions and connecting up classrooms, open up the possibility of education to, to as many people as we could. A wee bit of context about how the logistics in Dumfries and Galloway works. We can bring a student in to our Dumfries campus from Stranra. Takes about two hours on a bus. Over the course of an academic year, that student could travel about 16,000 miles. Is that really modern education, I would kind of say no, I think that's quite difficult for a student. So we had to look at something that was going to be able to try and reduce that as best as possible, but while still giving them access to that same education approach. We spoke with the guys at Agenda with, um, with John, almost talking firstly about our recent upgrade, but then started to share with them the project. And we started to, started to really just knock ideas backwards and forwards about what we were looking to do. We were looking to connect up as many different classrooms as we could right across the whole of the south of Scotland, but include our schools, our local authorities in this as well. We run college academies and we're bringing school kids up but they're coming in from all different parts of the region to come into the college for a day. So it was about trying to make sure we had a platform that could join up quite seamlessly, working with the schools, other wider platforms such as Glow, et cetera, but also the, the college's own systems and giving them that same feel as if they were still coming into college. It still had to be that kind of standalone feel. Just quick point on this picture. This is part of what you can see. What you're seeing, what you're seeing here is from the launch. And actually, we're in our Dumfries campus there. And um, Douglas, who's our vice principal for um, learning the skills, is actually in our Stranraer campus. So you can kind of start to see the feel that we were looking for. If you're in one classroom, i.e. Dumfries, and you were connected up to Stranra, it almost feels as if you're in the same room. You've had to try and look at something that grabbed a student, because we're talking about young students, we're talking about school students, it had to be something that gave them a bit of a, a wow factor. Um, and when I spoke to Callum, Callum is our ICT manager, Callum's the technical guru on this side of thing. I gave him a very easy brief. Callum, I want a wow factor. I want something that's going to jump out. If you're talking about virtualizing a classroom, you could, you see that we see a lot and some of them have maybe 40 or dense screens, for an example. I look at it and the fact is a kid can go at home and watch the football at home on a 40 or dense screen. It needs to be something bigger. It needs to be something better. I think you would maybe look and see the screen that we've got on there and you say, we would be achieved that in some way. But it's about getting them engaged. It needed to be something that engages with them. So what we've got now is the creation of hubs from Stranraer, Dumfries, Galashiels and Hoyk. 
and they're connected out to a number of spokes across Dumfries and, and Borders College into the schools. We chose the first phase of schools to try and capture the ones that, for an example, um, Sanka, which is a, as up in the, the kind of northern area of Dumfries and Galloway. Um, it's a low-income area. It's one where travelling and things like that. They've not got a great travel network, so actually putting it into the school there, you know, there's a bit of enhancement. Also, they've also suffered a bit from uh, connectivity. Callum, am I right there in saying Sanka was one with, with concerns with the connectivity, so it was a good one to trial on? Yeah, um, Sanka was one of the the slowest connections of the schools that we <clears throat> that we, we we took on as as spoke sites. Um, I think they've only got like a thirty meg connection. I mean that has since been upgraded, but at the time it was it was one that we knew um, suffered from poor connectivity, poor transport links, and as Billy said, it was a it's a <clears throat> Not really, well, maybe a deprived area of, of Dumfries and Galloway. It's it's maybe suffered from lack of investment in the past. Yeah, I, th- I think I would maybe just jump in and note that Dumfries and Galloway in the south of, the south of Scotland, there is some aspects of digital poverty across here. Connectivity issues are real, very real in remote areas. So the solution that we were looking for had to, to work on a wide range of wide range of bandwidths and it almost had to work in the slowest and, and the fastest and almost give you the same same approach and and we feel that through the testing that we've been doing that's what we we get from the VCM platform it's something that can work across those and and be quite seamless not all of them not all of them can do that They're, we're asking them to do a lot more than just you know the normal teaching i reflect on where we are just now we we online teaching we shouldn't can shouldn't they kind of mix up the online teaching that's gone on for the last year with what we're trying to achieve with this project. This project's a bit more than the online teaching and um, I think massive respect to, to everybody who's been doing online teaching. It's a it's a big shift moving from delivering in a classroom to delivering it over a, whichever platform it is you're delivering. It is a complete shift when you're not in front of your, your students. This project here, the, the Learning and Skills Network, you're still going to have physical students within the classrooms but you're also delivering to other classrooms elsewhere that maybe just don't have that lecturer in there so a big part of this project will be about the the kind of change in delivery style the the change of the pedagogy pedagogy a word that I would never ever have used before but it's now part of my language so um, it's it's interesting to see that you know there'll be a different style of delivery from this project when you're looking at online learning online teaching just now um you know i think a lot of them it's just they're delivering it from in front of a laptop but when you're actually in the the hubs it's the ability for the lecturer to be engaged with the students that are there and engaging the ones that are on the screen the ability to move about quite freely and talk quite freely we've got the the design of the classroom is such that we've got microphones that pick up at any point in the room the tracking camera, which means that, as I said, the lecturer can actually move about quite freely. That takes it to that step away from online learning as we think to online learning as it may, may well go down. I'm not going to say that that's going to be an easy shift for, for lecturers. There's a lot of work, a lot of training, a lot of support that will go hand in hand with that. But you can start to see how that's going to, that's evolving online teaching and how it's actually an, an innovation to, to help the, th- the theory is that you know that classroom there that you see there being Stranraer and you can see how quite clear it is it's not just a, a, a pokey little picture in the corner of a laptop now it's very much real it's as if you're stepping into the other classroom it's the same you can have multiple classrooms on that screen you can actually interact with those students you bring that classroom up that's what we were setting out to achieve the full interaction the full virtualization of that classroom Callum, do you want to just talk a bit more about the kind of journey that you've done from the technical side of the project? Sure. Yeah, um, so obviously my background has been IT for that more more than 20 years. So I'd, I'd worked on many different um, video conferencing projects, um, whatever else. And when, when this project was kind of presented to me, I knew it wasn't just going to be a simple video conferencing. Um, given the, the, the challenges of the the massive area we're working across um, and 
even down to like sort of technical capabilities of, of um, the staff that may be using it. So we, we had to look for a system that would would just work. Um, the, the 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 good thing with the the, the VC platform is it's it's um, it's low latency, it's high compression, so we don't get that drop in quality that you maybe get with the likes of Zoom or Teams or whatever else. And we we can almost keep that experience. Um, to, doesn't really matter on the, the the bandwidth. So if you've got a hundred meg connection, you've got a thirty meg connection, you've got like a little home ten meg connection. The experience is almost the same across everybody. Um, and also with, with uh, one of the good features we have with the, the VC and stuff is um, in, certainly in our classrooms is it just automatically connects the, the you set up like the, 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 the lesson and then the, the system at, when, at the assigned time will automatically drop in. So there's no, almost like no intervention from the lecturers or the teachers in the spoke sites. They, they don't have to do anything. It's just all automatically there for them. They literally just have to turn up, the classrooms connect, and then they can do their delivery. Um, other things we looked for as well is, um, I don't know if you can just see in that picture there, Stranra, the camera that's mounted on the ceiling. Now that's a tracking camera. Um, as Billy sort of mentioned, the, these cameras will actually allow people to wander around the room uh, and the camera tracks them. Um, so the, the lecturer doesn't just have to stand like in front of a lectern like they were just delivering. It's, they don't have to do that. They can almost, um, obviously, be, being a lecturer is, is like being an actor. You know, you, you walk across the stage, you, you put on your show. Um, so this, the, the, these tracking cameras will allow them to do that, that natural teaching rather than just uh, being a fixed position in front of a camera, which is obviously it's, it's quite a, uh, an old fashioned chalk and talk kind of thing. Um, with, with this particular room here, which is our um, Henry Duncan room, um, that screen, I believe it's about four meters wide by three meters high. Um, so that, as we, as we sort of said, is it almost feels like you are in the same room because everybody's tall. You know, you're not just looking at everything on a, a little tiny screen and it's, uh, squinting away at it. Um, and that, gives what we were sort of said at the beginning, which was the, the, the college without borders or college without walls, that, that everybody feels like they're, they're joined together, they're in the same place. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we did a lot of work with the schools um, to actually get them on board. I mean, that was one of the big challenges we had was um, to begin with, the, the schools were quite resistant to, to the college coming in and saying, here's some kit let's make it work. So we did a lot of work with like, the heads of service in the schools um, to, to, to shape what we, we wanted to deliver, what we wanted to get in, and to get them to understand what we were trying to achieve. And that was, you know, that was, that was a good learning curve for all of us, I think, um, in that we developed some really good relationships with the local authority. Um, and now we're going beyond this project, the, the local authority have um, they've pretty much adopted VSCENE as their go-to platform and they're looking to expand way beyond the, the bounds of this project. I think, Callum, what, what you've, you've made a great point there. It's, it's part, been part of our project. There was quite a lot of, we wanted to work in a collaborative style as well. You know, as much as we were leading on it and it was a lot of it was what we were thinking from the college's point of view, it was very much important to work and listen to the the, the councils and the, the, those that are actually going to be delivering as well. I think when you're coming down this route and coming down this avenue, you need to have that full buy in. It is quite an important project. It is quite an important shift. So the collaborative approach to it, um, as John and his team have testified to the visits that we had up to, unfortunately it was pre-COVID, I will note because the date is up there in the top one, top corner of the big screen, it was pre-COVID and we managed to get visits up to, to Agenda's site. Um, it's quite important to do things like that from all angles, to actually let them see it in a live environment and understand how it, how it works. We used um, UHI and Eastcoil as well, who use the VSIN system, they, they, they use it in different ways. What we've tried, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to achieve is a, a kind of an amalgamation of, of the ways. Some use it purely for the, the the kind of video conferencing style. Some use it for the teaching. So we wanted, uh, we we always said we wanted to amalgamate it and actually make it that one size fits all type thing for us. Um, it, it be part of our core 
learning and delivery model. So that's that. That's why we've done a lot of kind of stress testing, a lot of going out and actually checking it before we before we actually push the button. We needed to make sure, from a technical point of view, from an ICT point of view, it sounded like it worked. But you know what we can do is put something in and just say, there you go, that that fits. You need to go back and and take on board that. And we're still going through that process just now of taking on board. You know, the learnings, the comments, for an example, we're now looking at the next phase of five schools for Dumfries and Galloway. And there's potentially a different way that we can actually do it using maybe more mobile kit down in the schools. Schools have got space issues. They're not blessed with the ability to give up a room for this at the time. So the next option may be that there's a mobile option. There's conversations on the go um, between ourselves for that one. But it goes to show that, you know, there, there is an opportunity for it. There is... There's a, when we hear of a learn uh, a lesson to be learned, we can be a bit more flexible. The system's built for flexibility. That is quite important in terms of an AFE institution. The flexibility, um, you know, we're not blessed with massive budgets. We can't be changing things all the time. So we need something that's able to be flexible, that's able to be adaptive, that is almost future proof, and that we can actually it can grow along with us. And that's why we felt the VC product itself was actually um, a really, really good fit. If I can so, also, um, if I can just interject there and uh, lay a little bit more praise on you, you know, obviously what this has done is has improved access to education. You know, it's, it's been an enabler to um, look at significant opportunities um, across subject delivery and enhancement, things like that. But there's also the, the, the sustainable aspect of it as well, you know, um, near carbon zero um, sort of targets that we've got in place um, with a, 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 as, as, a, as a nation, you know, Dumfries and Galloway are, you know, head and shoulders quite um, evidentially um, away from everybody else, which leads me on to the next thing. You know, could you tell us a little bit about, you know, the awards, the Green Gown Awards that, you, that you've just recently won? Ah, uh, John, that was a shameless plug, and I thank you very much for setting that up for me. I really do appreciate that. Um, but my modesty precedes me in the fact that, yeah, so this week at the, the, the UK and Ireland wide Green Gown Awards, Dumfries and Galloway College were actually named Sustainability Institution of the Year, um, an award which is a sense of enormous pride for myself and for the college as a whole. Um, we're going up against, you know, colleges and universities right across the UK and Ireland and to have our work recognised um, and what we do for sustainability is, is a huge factor. Um, when we look at sustainability as a college, we look at, it's not just about carbon savings. A lot of people look at sustainability as let's try and reduce our carbon, let's try and drop some electricity. We don't. Um, examples, examples of things that we've done is um, tackling, stu uh, tackling student poverty, breakfast clubs, um, refill stations, pop-up shops for um, you know recycled goods, etc. We looked at the, the the general emissions drop in the leaders the leadership of it. And when I say the general emissions, we've dropped our carbon emissions by thirty three percent in five years. So it's a, quite a quite a huge feat that we've done already. Um, the the hub that you see just in front of you, of you there, it's part of uh, the, the Henry Duncan um, Research and Innovation, which we actually have the Green Energy Centre, which is completely powered by renewable technology. So um, wind turbine, solar panels, ground and air source heat and rainwater harvesting. So part of a big project where we've not just looked at the digital side, but actually the, the environmental impact of a build. Um, so thanks very much for uh, talking about the innovations and the sustainability, John, because, yeah, we are very proud and it forms part of everything that we look at. And when you look at actually the the, the this project, a big part of it is the, the sustainability factor. It's the reduction of travel. It's the, it's the widening access. It's the helping, helping students get access to the education. Therefore, one of the big things that we see is in Dumfries and Galloway, some students have a very stark choice. It's what they can afford to do. It's can they afford to travel into college? Can they afford to not, not work to do a college? We think by giving them the opportunity to work on a, on a flexible means through this type of project, through the digital technology, they might not have to make that choice. They can actually juggle both. And surely that for us is better for the student, it's better for the region. We're, as a college, 
through hopefully through through time through our our digital platforms and our learning technology. Hopefully, we're increasing our um, retention and attainment. We're keeping students on longer and we're helping them to achieve. Yeah. And ultimately, the knock-on effect is the local economy is greening a higher skilled workforce out there on the back end of that. And yeah, we're breaking down that poverty barrier, which does affect such a such a rural region. So yeah, that's a, that's the whole sustainability approach. As I said, it's not just about the carbon savings; it is about that whole approach. And yeah, John, we look at it as a region. We don't just look at it as a college. How can we impact it right across the region? Region, and we think this type of project has shown pretty good leadership. Um, I will shamelessly plug that we will be going on to the International Green Gown Awards later in the year as well. So we will be on the world stage. And I did set out at the start of this project that that's where I that's where I would love. Dumfries and Galloway College to be so yeah um, it's a bit it's a big achievement and you know we're still on that journey we've got a long way to go but we are leading it and we will keep pushing it and we will keep being innovative as well that's absolutely absolutely brilliant um and it, you know it's it's you know it's a stark kind of um you know realization and a reminder of you know innovation uh, you know starts with single people you know and and we've seen that you, and unfortunately, yeah, you're not unique, right? There are other people that are innovative, but it's still a minority, you know? But these kind of people are the people that lead things and take risks, you know, and look at the kind of future landscape and take everything into consideration, you know? And these are the the, the dream makers, you know, um, which are in every industry, but in education, it's, it's crucially important to have these dream makers because these are the ones that make significant change, not just now, but for the future. And as you mentioned, Billy, you know, and when we talk about rural and disadvantaged uh, aspects of education, it is, it is cyclical and it does have a knock-on effect. And everything starts with education. The better the education, the better the world, you know, the better the economy, the better politically everything is, you know. And this collaborative approach to creating innovation is, is crucially important to how we democratise access to education, you know. And this is, we're seeing significant advancements in Scotland um, compared with any other countries, you know. And I think this is because, you know, Scotland has always been an entrepreneurial nation. You know, everything was invented in Scotland, you know. Yes, eventually we did sell the intellectual property, but everything was invented in Scotland to begin with. And that's, you know, it is, it's, you know, it's within our DNA. Um, and uh, it is, and we are humbling, we're humbled to be involved in such, such innovative projects, you know. And, uh, you know, it is, over the last year, it's been extremely difficult, you know, particularly for teachers, because a teacher's job's hard enough, you know, without having to... Um, think about new technologies because technology is most of the time hindering you know it is difficult you know and on average a teacher has using maybe 15 to 20 different software tools that's about there just now tell them to use something else it's, it's going to be even more difficult and you mentioned about natural teaching you know any any technology should be invisible you know it should be in the background you know they shouldn't have to worry about pressing buttons and things like that they should be able to just walk in the room and and, and expect everything to work magically and that is that is where we want to be okay thanks very much john i'm just conscious of the fact that we're coming up near the half an hour mark and we have a couple of questions come in for you guys so thank you john billy and callum if we could have a couple of questions just now we'll wrap up and then we'll have a more informal chat afterwards i think kenji you had an interesting one regarding the uh well i'll let you do it yourself Thank you, please no, I mean, it looks like an amazing setup, especially with the size of the screen, the freedom to move around the, the room. It almost mirrors that, that real face-to-face -face teaching experience. So I'm just wondering, what kind, of, what kind of training and support did you offer staff when they were making this switch to this kind of distributed style of teaching? I'll, I'll take this one if you want, Billy. Um, okay, okay, thank you, Carl. <laughs> so, um, so obviously we have our... Um, uh, staff development manager so she she was obviously involved in, a, in all of this discussion that we had around the technology and then with her team of blended learning advisors they all took part in the training so it was with with the help of, of john and the rest of the team at agenda it was like train the trainer almost um so they then took it and disseminated it to to the staff who then um started just playing with the equipment you know so almost quite natural so the, the, we'll just let them free with it so basically here you go that's the kit 
find out what you can do with it um, and, and, and do that kind of thing. Um, and when we were doing trials as well, um, we found that people just almost like naturally started talking to the cameras. Um, it was it was things like um, one one of one of one part of the um, <clears throat> the fact finding we did when we visited um, Inverness. We went up to UHI in Inverness, and we talked to some of their um, lecturers up there. Was um, the remote people making them feel? part of, of, the, of the class and that was a lot of that was like talking directly to them so at the start of the meeting or start, start of the, the, the lesson sort of going oh hi Sterling how are you how you know and then talk to each of the classes that way and that actually started becoming a natural um, thing for for the for our lecturers um, we had a bit of a, a an open day session when we were sort of demonstrating it as well um, um, we had one of our colleagues was in Stranra and we were connecting from Dumfries to Stranra. It was before the sort of official launch, shall we say. So it was just a bit of a demo. Um, and Lindsay, who was the, in, in Stranra, she was really nervous to begin with because like, she'd never done it before. Um, and I, I was there and I was, I was, I was doing the, the connection to make sure it would, it would connect straight through. Um, and the first sort of session, she was, as I said, really quite nervous a bit stuttery by the fourth time we'd done like these sort of round robin sessions she was natural she was just like hi hi everyone and and, and it was just they just sort of saw how how seamless it was and how as, as john was sort of saying you know there, there was there was no need for them to actually worry about the technology it just worked if i can just jump in ever so slightly Callum, because I think you know it, it's quite important to note that we still a journey to go on with the with the rest of the, the the staff, and I think we're initial. Some of the initial work has been quite positive. Obviously, the downside to using the full system, and I mean the full rooms, has been the the, the impact of, the impact of COVID and having people actually in these rooms working. So it's almost as if now our plan is to start probably go back to the start and reintroduce them to it and start building it back up from there but be able to actually widen it out to the rest of the college and 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 through the schools start to really pick back up again because you know they've gone for the last year almost going back going through as i said the, the online teaching as opposed to this virtual classroom teaching so we will need to probably go back and that's something that we will be we'll be picking up on as Callum says there is an element of there will be an element of the, the, I suppose it's, it's, it's fear factor, but it's, I don't really mean it as that. It's a, it's a change for the norm, and it would just be back to familiarisation, letting them. The biggest thing is making that facility available and saying, right, listen, you're free to go and use it. Let's go and do what you need to do with it. And that's what we want to try and adopt. Go and use it. Play with it. Work with it. Do what you need to do and get used to it. Get fresh with it. The most important thing is not just dropping people in there say that's it go and teach in it because that just will not work you will never get the buy-in excellent right thank you so much billy at this point we're going to say goodbye to the people on youtube so please hit like subscribe and share this and do consider checking out the cdm website where you might be able to join a live session if you're very lucky uh, so thank you very much to everyone in youtube land goodbye <laughs>